Hello, welcome back. Today we're talking about the surfaces that we're going to be airbrushing on in the culinary world. We obviously are going to have a buttercream or a fondant uh, round. And then we can have our little pastillage and gum paste accents, as well as isomalt pieces. Oops, sticky isomalt. Gelatin pieces. And then wafer paper. So some of these are more standard and some are more exotic, but it's important to know how they take airbrush color. None of these things like big, heavy, intense, instant sprays. Light, light, light coats building up to an opacity is much, much better. You're going to get much better results. If you go too fast and too hard, you'll get uh, running or beading on the pastillage, fondant and gum. If you use too much product, you could literally melt your isomalt and then you really have a mess. And then of course, wafer paper, you get it too wet and it'll, it'll just turn into a soggy mess. So you do have to be careful. Uh, tips, if you're gonna be using pearl colors, they tend to be more sheer. So have an underlayer of a base color and then use the pearl color you'll get a lot better result and you'll end up using a lot less product. So now we're going to uh, demonstrate some of this. Here's some tips for airbrushing success and I'm going to be demonstrating on a sheet of edible printer paper. The first thing is the idea of layering, which is building colors up from gradual to stronger colors. You don't take any longer to airbrush the end design, but you can get a lot more a richer color, uh, more even coverage, and a lot more um, um, variety out of layering. So it's a good tool to, to know how to use. The next is distance. I see a lot of students trying to do gradients and big coverage very close to the surface, and you get a line. It's very difficult to have that, that soft color build up when you're fighting a, a bunch of lines on the paper. Also, they zigzag, which builds color up on either end of the line. And again, it's very hard to get a smooth, consistent coverage that way. And scribbling very fast with the airbrush, like it were a marker pen. And you end up with product splashing all over the place. And you end up with a lot of loss of control on the surface itself. So uh, let's get started. First, we're going to do scribble coverage that I see students try to, to do when they're first learning, as opposed to building up color in light, even layers, one on top of the other. Now we're going to see the zigzag stroke, as I call it. You can see that the heavy coverage is starting to sag and drip and the heavy lines on the barbell and thin, inconsistent middles. Now look at our light, even coverage, exactly what we want. I'm gonna do some gradient strokes starting at the bottom of the page. This is purple, and I'm building up color very strong and solid at the bottom. And as I move up the page, gradually applying less and less paint, and you also notice my hand goes, gets further and further away from the surface. I'm going to come back down, fill in any weak spots that I see. If this were a cake round, I'd have it on my turntable and I'd be spinning as I paint so that I have the same consistent line application going all the way around. Okay. Now I'm going to reach down and grab my red, just spraying out the last of the purple there. I'm not worrying about cleaning my airbrush because I'm going from color to color so I don't have to worry about color contamination because in this specific instance, that's kind of the point. I am going to give a quick spray into a paper towel, make sure the red's coming out. Now I'm going to apply red over that purple again, starting at the base. Nice solid coverage, much heavier product build up at the bottom. And we're going to fade again back up to the top. And these are individual lines. Even though you see a zigzag motion with me and the air is always on, the paint is only being applied in line, line, line configuration. So I don't have the color build up on the, on the edges. Now I've reached for my gold luster. This is a very sheer color. And this is going to go on as a solid, even coat over the entire surface. 
So between the white edible paper and the solid gold luster, we've got a sandwich of this gradient. And that's what's going to give the visual interest to, to this piece. So here we go. You can see a little bit of the gold going down. Again, it's not a very strong color, especially at this angle. But you do see it going over the gradient. It's darkening up slightly. There we go. I'm tilting this finished gradient back and forth so that hopefully you get a chance to see you can go from very, very well, very strong gradient to almost just a flash of solid metallic. It just depends at the viewing angle. And that's one of the things that adds interest to a piece like this. Okay, here's the finished gradient that you just watched me spray. I happen to do this with three colors just to show building and depth with purple, red, and then a fairly sheer transparent luster gold. You could use any colors you want. You could do a solid color instead of a gradient, but the whole idea of this is to show you um, nice, smooth, consistent color buildup that uh, is relatively quick to do and has a wonderful, rich, um, opulent payoff for the effort.